Highlights Magazine had the best picture searches. Maybe you received it in the mail or found it at your doctor's office. And you turn to that page in which a baseball bat was hidden in the trunk of a tree. Or an ice cream cone was embedded in the outline of a dog. And you did your very best to find all the pictures in the search. And that's something that children today may not experience in Highlights magazine. But they find on the internet. Or they use on an app. Because we still value that experience of of searching for pictures or discovering things that are hidden. We don't want to have the experience of missing anything that may be overlooked. That was my sense as I prepared this message. Because the story of the ten lepers is really familiar. Everybody seems to have a a pretty certain idea of its significance. There's 10 guys that have leprosy. They're distanced from everybody else. They're not able to interact and relate, but they've heard something about Jesus and the ability that he has to heal and that he seems to be merciful to people like them. And as he passes by, they cry out, Jesus, have mercy on us. And that's exactly what happens. He takes notices of the guys. And he says, go show yourselves to the priests because there were rituals and expectations for determining whether or not you had been cleansed. And as they were on their way, they were healed. But just one of the ten turned back, made his way to Jesus, and praised God for all that had been done for him. And the message is that we all ought to be thankful that we really ought to endeavor to be like the one rather than the nine. We ought to honor God for the work that he has done in our lives. That's a valuable message. Uh, That is a lesson about which we read throughout the Bible. But there may be something that we overlook. Because when Jesus invites them to make their way to the priests, they were going to have this arduous cleansing process that is described in Leviticus 14. If you have any interest, you may want to read it. It describes there the process for being cleansed from skin diseases. For those who had experienced a cleansing or wanted to be restored to the community, they needed to present themselves to the priests outside of the camp. The priest would take note of whether or not they had been cleansed, and if it seems like they were, he was instructed to take two live birds, to sacrifice one of the birds over water in a clay pot, and then to dip the live bird into the blood of the bird that had been sacrificed and to sprinkle it on the one who had been cleansed. That person would then need to shave all the hair off their body and then could be restored to the camp. Not to their own tent, but just to the camp. For seven days they would be there at which point they would again need to shave all the hair off their body and on the eighth day present themselves to the priest and bring with them two male lambs and even a ewe lamb. These would be sacrificed for sin and guilt. And as part of one of those sacrifices, blood from a lamb would be put on the person's right earlobe and right thumb and right big toe. It is an amazingly detailed process. And that's essentially the expectation for those that Jesus had sent to the priests. But there was something different. Rather than make his way to the priests and experience this process, there was a leper that returned and fell down at Jesus' feet and worshipped him. 
And he seemed to recognize something different. Because as those other lepers were kind of making their way through a process, a process that seems extraordinary to us, and yet fits with so much of the teaching from the Bible about purity and cleanliness before God. There was one leper that recognized that he just had an encounter with God. That he did not need to make his way to the priests to be declared clean before God. Because he had just encountered God who made him clean. And so he returned to Jesus and he fell down at his feet and he worshiped him as God. And Jesus even marveled at that because he said there were 10, weren't there? Where are the other nine? The other nine didn't get it. The other nine did what they would have always done, made their way to the priests and go through the ritual and do all these things so that they would be cleansed before God. But Jesus said, this foreigner, this Samaritan, he gets it. He came back and fell down before God because he had already been made clean. It is not so much a story about being thankful as it is a story about being mindful. A story about recognizing the ways that God is at work, not just appreciating God for all that he does. We are in the midst of a series entitled Overlooked. And every message tends to highlight a person or people that are overlooked by others, but not by God. But this message, this message is different Because we highlight the most obvious, Jesus. Jesus is the one that is overlooked. He was overlooked by the nine lepers. It did not dawn on them, make sense to them, that they had encountered God in that way. That they were already cleansed because of what he had done. And before we criticize them too much, The reality is we got to recognize that we do the same. There are moments that we overlook Jesus. Maybe you're having some tension with a friend. You've done something to harm them. They are hurt and frustrated. You're not able to resolve it. And you're just carrying around this burden of guilt. It's bothering you every day. Because you feel awful about what it is that you've done to them and and you're just consumed by by getting them to give you some assurance or, or to work it out. And you really overlook the way Jesus may be at work. Or perhaps you're dealing with some financial constraint. You've got some unexpected bills and you've got to pay for things to be repaired at your house. You're not sure the ways you're going to cover that. You've called some repair people to come out and, and set aside time from work, even losing some income while you're at home for that convenient four-hour window, only to have them not show up. And you are frustrated and angry. You don't even have money to pay for the repair. And then you're taking time off work and, and you're missing other money, and then they don't show up, and and the whole thing is so awful, and you overlook the way Jesus might be at work. Or perhaps you have a decision to make about your work or your home, and you're consumed by the decision because you really believe it's going to affect so much else in your life. It's one of those defining decisions that you don't want to get it wrong. And you write down the pros and cons, you invite advice from all kinds of different people, and and it's just gnawing at you. You can hardly get any sleep because you're not sure what to do, and you don't want to mess it up. And you may overlook Jesus at work. Just recently, I visited Hawaii, and was able to be in the ocean and take hikes up the mountains and appreciate everything about those beautiful islands, even the history. 
There are all kinds of statues around Hawaii, and most of them are of island royalty. People that uh, influenced the development of the islands and the peoples who live there. But there was one statue that was different from the rest. It was of a, a squat man with a funny hat that looked like he didn't belong uh, amongst all of the other island people. He, he looked a little bit like an ancient priest. That's exactly what he was. His name was Damien. Damien had been born in Belgium, one of four children, each of whom ended up serving in the church. Two girls who became nuns, two boys who became priests. And among the kids, Damien did not necessarily have the smarts, but he certainly had the dedication. I mean, he really wanted to, to serve and to engage others. So much so that when he began, became a priest, he wanted a, a mission experience. And he was sent to the kingdom of Hawaii to witness to the people there. He made his way. He began to do just that, developed relationships, shared the word. When he discovered that there had been an outbreak of leprosy and those who contracted it, had been sent to a particular island. There was a colony there on Molokai that was attracting hundreds of people who had been diagnosed with this illness. Uh, the other missionaries and leaders decided that somebody needed to go over there and serve them. And because it was an unappealing task, they asked for volunteers rather than making a demand of somebody. And there were a few that volunteered, including Damien. And he was selected to be the first one over there with the thought that they would all take turns making their way back and forth from that island. But when he made his way to Molokai and met the people, he embraced them. He became one of them. They worked together. They planted crops together. They worshiped together. And when invited, he refused to return to the other islands. And so the other missionaries never made their way. He remained there for 16 years until he was diagnosed with leprosy and died. And the stories of Damien became legend, not just on the islands of Hawaii, but on continents all over the world. So much so that when Hawaii became a state and was invited to contribute two statues to the U.S. Capitol. They sent one of Kamehameha I, uh, the king that kind of gathered the Hawaiian islands together. And they sent one of Damien, the priest. And there are all kinds of people that tell his story and highlight him and mention the things that he did. But if you were to engage the people that he served, had you been there 150 years ago, you would have heard them mention Jesus. That he taught us about Jesus. How that he demonstrated the love of Jesus. That he was here with us just as Jesus was. That he reminded us that Jesus had not forsaken us that he assured us uh, that we would go to heaven and be with him, that even when he died, we were reminded uh, that we could be confident we would be with Jesus. Everybody else tells the story. The plaques that are on the statues of Damien have entirely overlooked Jesus. And that so often happens. That was the experience of those nine lepers. And yet in the midst of that reality, Jesus reveals himself in ways that he does not want us to miss. Maybe you are having conflict with a friend. You've hurt them in some way. They're frustrated with you and unwilling to reconcile about it. And as you are ridden with guilt, Jesus comes to you with the assurance that you are absolutely forgiven. 
It might be a verse that you read or a message that you hear, but he doesn't want you to overlook that your sin is taken away, that he does not hold it against you. Perhaps you are making a difficult decision and you're not sure what to do about work or home and you feel like it's going to have all kinds of ramifications if you don't get it right. And and Jesus reveals himself in the midst of that to assure you that your identity is in him. No matter what's happening at work, no matter what you decide about home, you are his. You are part of his family. You are his servant. He is at work in your life. Perhaps you're frustrated because you don't have the money that you need or the repairs seem like too much. The guy doesn't show up. It's costing you even more money. Uh, the whole thing couldn't be worse. And, and then you see Jesus at work providing for you in a way that you didn't expect, <laughs> using the person's failure to show up as a way to meet your need with another repair person who was better or cheaper or different or to answer your prayer in some other way. He reveals himself in ways that he wants us to notice so that we can't possibly miss it. That was my experience this week. As I was going through the motions, maybe that's the description for those nine lepers. They were going through the motions. They weren't doing anything wrong. Uh, They did exactly what was expected of them. They were supposed to show up to the priest, but they were just going through the motions. Uh, They didn't really note that God was at work in an extraordinary way. And so much like you, I was going through the motions. You know, I was down here listening to some voicemails and responding to some calls and making sure things were getting taken care of on campus for the summer and out running a couple errands. And and then I was going to go visit one of our friends. Bernice Hyatt has been struggling with the cancer and and I've been over there to commune her over the last couple of weeks and different occasions and, and the cancer was getting a little worse. And so I just wanted to go over there and pray with her. I and went over and, and had occasion to pray with her and her family and, and give her a blessing and just share a few words about heaven. And as we were doing that, God took her. At the very moment, took her to heaven as we were praying about exactly that. And it was a moment where I was reminded that It's not just us visiting each other, calling each other, or running errands, or making sure stuff's done, or taking care. God is at work. God is doing something extraordinary in the midst of all that. And we found ourselves just having to pause. Not just because Bernice had passed, but we paused because God had taken her to heaven right then. These aren't just words that we say or things that we talk about. God had really done it. The reality is that we can overlook Jesus. As famous as he is, as much as the name is known, it happens all the time. There are people gathered in churches all around the country hearing different verses from the Bible, maybe some of them even hearing this story. And the message that they're hearing is be thankful, try harder, be more appreciative, read the Bible more, Uh, become a better person. And if that's the message that they are receiving, they're missing Jesus. They're missing the emphasis and the reality, even from this text. It's not just about us being thankful and appreciative and and expressing all the right things. It's about God at work in incredible ways that sometimes people don't notice, and yet it is still so fantastic, and he works in our lives just as he did in theirs. He gives us the same faith that he gave to that one leper that returned and fell down at his feet and did not overlook. You may miss the baseball bat in the trunk of the tree. You may not see the ice cream cone in the outline of a dog. 
but you will not miss him. You cannot overlook the way that he will be at work in your life. In the name and for the sake of Jesus. Amen.